All right, this is how to decode a data matrix by hand. The real short of it is, this is what a data matrix looks like right here. And it is broken up into bytes in this kind of fashion. And each byte equals something, which minus one is an ASCII value, unless it's a pair, which it can mean two, two numbers. And that's the short of it. It has about, I don't know, a 14 by 14 here that I have has 18 bytes worth of data into it, but it only uses half. Okay, so that's the short of it. That's how you decode a data matrix in less than a minute. Anyways, now let me show you how to decode a data matrix by hand and all the steps behind it. So the first thing I'll show you here is this data matrix. And you can see it is a capital ABC, then a lowercase ABC, and then 1, 2, 3. Now this is a 14 by 14 uh, size data matrix and 14 is the number of cells which is the number of pixels if you will. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and then 14 down. So the basis behind a data matrix is that it has a border, a solid black line on the left and bottom side, a dotted black line on the right and upper side of it. Now it's broken up into these L-shaped regions here. And these L-shaped regions have a pretty basic, um, what do I want to say to this? They have a pretty basic um, shape to them. So let me just do this and I'll show you this is the real short of it. It goes in this kind of pattern where it's 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And if these cells, these little dots are on, then that is that byte's worth turned on. Uh, for instance, if this guy, i uh, use black to show it, were on, and uh, this guy were on, and that means I'm going to do 64 plus 2. And so let's say 64 plus 2 equals, of course that's 66, but because the data matrix has three different types of what the data can mean, or really the basics of it, is that uh, it either can mean an ASCII value, and this is an ASCII chart, and this is going to be the values of between 1 through 127, or really 128. If, if you're going through 0 through 127, or 1 through 128, but in this case we're going to do 1 through 128 kind of thing. So anyhow, let's see, what was my value again? It was 66, and minus 1 gives us 65, and 65 in ASCII, go up to our chart here, is a capital A. So, that's how the L thing works. Now, this isn't the data matrix that I'm going to show you how to decode. This is just an example how to use the L bracket. So, now we got to fill in the rest of these guys here. And it kind of looks, uh, let's see if I can find a better picture. No, no, I suck at this. Alright, well, let's fill this thing out by hand. The, you want to go for like a couple different colors here. Blue. So on the top corner of the data matrix, it's going to look like this every single size you have. And then from there, you're going to have a different size uh, data matrix. And each one of them are going to, oops, going to look slightly different in how they're laid out. But each of them have this kind of basic... Um, thing where it's just laid out like this. Now the extra ones on the sides here are still bytes, but they're laid out oddly different. So turning this guy back to blue and this guy back to blue, let's go through here and figure this out. Now you see the L bracket here and you see how they kind of all fit within each other in this kind of fashion. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to find all the complete L brackets that you can that'll fit. Obviously I can't fit one here because it's only six or it only has uh, two spaces wide. I need three. So what do I do with this data? Well, the first thing you're going to do is start here and you're going to create a new one as if there were one there. However, there isn't, but we're going to kind of create it like it were. 
And then this guy, as if there were one there, we're going to give it, you know, a partial partial size there. And then there's one over here. He goes there. And the reason that we're doing this is essentially we're wrapping the data around the border of the data matrix. So anyhow, let's see if we clear these things here. I want to show you the order of bytes that this all goes in. But let me finish this real quick. Okay. All right, a green there and orange there and finally I'll leave that last one white because that one's special it's special in a terrible terrible way anyhow these let's break it down like this with the grid so this is this is the byte that we or this is the the order of bytes man this is so hard to explain and each one of these has a corner here of our L bracket. We're looking at the lower right-hand portion of it. And we're going to put a little X there in every single one of them. And the idea is, is that we go from uh, the, the one standard one that's always going to be here in the corner. That's called, uh, that's going to be our, our chunk number two. Now chunk number one starts down here because technically if it were there, uh, it actually wraps around over here and is on this side. Remember how I told you the data wraps around? Since I have two here, I have the matching six over here. So anyways, byte one starts here, goes up to two, and then up to three. And three wraps around down here for the remaining uh, five that's missing. Being it has three here, so a total of eight, so that makes sense. So then it comes down here to four, then we go to five, six, and you can see um, I'm hitting the X's on each one of these guys, seven. And then we have that special guy down here, number eight. And eight is also up here. Eight is this corner guy, and the corner guy is very special. If we go to Wikipedia and we search for data matrices, you'll see this nice screen like this. And it has, this is a great reference to where I learned this. I have a buddy of mine named Sean who also taught me this as well. Um, but anyhow, the corner byte is either going to be one of four different cases. In this case, we're looking at case number one, where it has the kind of upside down L and three of them down here. That's the case we're looking into with this one, where it has three down at the bottom and an upside down L over here. And you'll get different cases based on the different size data matrix you're working with, be it 10 by 10 up to 20 by 20. And so you can see on the Wikipedia site, maybe a better representation of the way I did it, is that you can see the little red dot in that bottom right corner of the L bracketed byte. And it goes in a pattern such as this. Wikipedia is a great reference if you want to relearn how to do this again. But hopefully this video is a great starter for you, although <laughs> it may not be. So anyways, you'll notice that there's... Um, like 18 or yeah 18 17 who cares there's a bunch of byte sections here uh, okay I show 18 but anyhow there's there's all these byte sections but really only eight of these 18 are used for data the other 10 are for error correction now the error correction is something called Reed Solomon error correction and I'm not going to bother trying to teach you that because I don't know what I'm looking at. I mean, this this is Reed Solomon. This is a bunch of I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm a programmer and nowhere near a mathematician. I mean, look at this. No, that's silly. Forget this mess. Back to the simple things like ASCII. So anyhow, I remember how I told you that this was byte 1 and it wrapped around down here. So this is the data matrix that I've decided to decode. And it is, again, capital ABC, then lowercase ABC, and then 1, 2, 3. So byte number 1 here, or as I like to call them chunks, because it doesn't necessarily equal the byte, because uh, in case of numbers, it can equal 2 bytes worth of data. And I'll get to that in a bit when I hit the 1 and 2 and 3. So byte, or chunk number 1 here, being that we always start 
beneath the first completed one. The first completed one is always going to be 2, and the first one is going to start here. So remember that over here I'll show you chunk number 2, which is the whole one. I got 128, 64, 32, 16, 18, 4, 2, and 1. It's the same pattern just wrapped around uh, for bite number one. So I got 128 and 64, then 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Now I've kind of darkened the cells here where they're filled out on this guy. So 64 and 2 are highlighted. So 64 plus 2 is 66. Minus 1 is 65. And going to our ASCII chart, which you can search ASCII, it's A-S-C-I-I, -I, and you pull up a whole bunch of ASCII charts, they're all over the place. But anyways, 65, if you go to our decimal thing here, 65 is a capital A. So there is the first character of our barcode, capital A. Nice. Well, you can kind of see where this is going to go from here. Our second byte uh, has 64, 2, and 1 highlighted, are filled in with black, in our data matrix here. That is 67. Minus 1 is 66. One more than 65. It's a capital B. And we can go back to our ASCII chart here and see 66 is indeed a capital B. So continuing on down the line, the next one has 64 and this one's wrapped vertically. So it's just, you know, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, then 4, 2, and 1. Uh, gives us 64 plus 4, 68, minus 1, because that's just how the data matrix does it. Uh, the ASCII values are always just one more than they should be, so you just subtract 1 to get the full ASCII value, 67. Being, again, one more than 66 is the next character down, C. And so in the ASCII chart, you have uh, capital letters, and you have uh, lowercase letters, and you have a couple other things like numbers, and you got symbols, and you have a couple other uh, like serial type commands like uh, character return as, as if you were to hit the enter bar or tab or something along that lines. Anyways, the next character we're going to be looking for is a 97 for a lowercase a. So coming back to this, uh, we have, let's see here, starting here, 64 plus 32 plus 2 is 98. Minus 91, there is that 97. Gives us our lowercase a. Now the same thing here for chunk number 5, 64, 32, 2, and 1 equals 99, minus 1 is 98, that is no lowercase b. Now for c, you get the picture. For chunk number 7, now this one does wrap around again, uh, but this one is special, as in it is not an ASCII character. Uh, the thing about data matrix is very, very smart, whoever came up with this is that uh, if there are two numbers next to each other it displays them ab above 130 and you just subtract 130 to get those two characters. It's, it's just really quite ingenious. So here's the thing, 128 uh, and it wraps around and comes up a little bit and then you go 64 and uh, 32, 16, 8, 2, or 4, 2, 1. So we got 128, 4, 8 and 2 equals 142. So the thing is now we're going to subtract 130, which gives us 12. What are our next two characters? 1 and 2. Pretty stinking smart, isn't it? So if you had, say, um, 195 minus 130, um, 195 minus 130, is 65, so the next two characters would then be 6 and 5. Pretty stinking smart. I like the way they did that. Now, this is only for digit pairs, and so our final character is 3. Now, in this case, this is this weird thing where I had to go to Wikipedia to get... Oh, get out of here, Reed Solomon. I had to go to Wikipedia to get the case, and eventually, if you want to do these things by hand, you'll probably have to memorize these these four little cases here, which aren't too hard. I mean, I wanted to learn the data matrix because it's like a puzzle, and I love puzzles. Of course, you know I do code, so that's puzzles are my thing. Code is a big puzzle. So anyhow, you have to get the bit positions off this guy. So this being 1, this being 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So coming back to this guy... 
Uh, we got 32, 16, and 4, which gives us a total of 52. Uh, that is less than 130, so we know it's an ASCII character. And that is 51. So 51 is, drum roll pre, please, an ASCII number 3. So that is the last character right there. It uses ASCII uh, versus, instead of the, the pairs, because there's only the one, it just uses the ASCII instead. Pretty cool. Now, the only exception to this rule is if this comes out to be 129, this final number here, that means that not all eight chunks were used. Maybe only seven chunks were used, and the eighth one is unnecessary. It can be an 129, which means don't worry about this chunk or any chunk beyond it. So now you bet you're wondering, what about, you know, chunk 9 through 18? Well, those are the error correction chunks. Um, or for maybe a, if it has that, you know, 129 end, end chunk on it, then those could also be padding as well. Because each one of these data matrices actually has a max size to it. Now here's this great PDF that my buddy Sean found for me. It has a whole bunch of similar information in it, and I'll link to this PDF in the comments. It's on the internet. But it will tell you uh, each size here, and you probably have to see if I can't. There we go. So if I have, in my case, an instance of 14 by 14 uh, data matrix, I have eight chunks of code word. So I have my eight chunks, and then I have 10, that's the other 9 through 18, I have my other 10 uh, error correction words, which I'm not I'm probably ever going to bother to learn. So it gives you a little more data. It's like uh, it can hold 16 uh, numeric total or 10 alpha numeric in total. And so 14 by 14 is actually a 12 by 12 because the, the pattern, I guess, doesn't truly count. You don't really take that into effect. And so this will tell you how many you have. So if you're working with a 14 by 14, you have eight chunks of data to work with. And this is very important to know, or else you're going to run over into the error correction stuff, and you're going to get this weird data, and you'll be like, what the crap is this? So I'll link to this in the comments. You can probably find this. I, could, I didn't see this on Wikipedia anywhere. But Wikipedia is also another great resource to how to figure this out. Um, so if you come up here right below this great graphic representation they give here, is the thing I was talking about earlier, whereas 1 through 128 is the ASCII value plus 1, 129 is an end of message, and 130 through 229 is the digit pairs. Now the rest of the stuff, I haven't really seen this uh, used, but they, they reference a little bit more of that down here as well, and how to use that if need be. So there you are, that in a nutshell is how to solve for a data matrix. Oh yeah, look at this. They give a great little picture here to kind of show uh, purple being the the uh, pattern defined, green being the actual data chunks that you'll be decoding by hand, and then yellow if it has need be for padding. You can see right here this yellow in particular has the dots down here at the bottom and the dot dot down here up, up at the top left talking too fast for my own brain to keep up. This is the classic 129. This is 128 and this is 1. So therefore 129 and this means end byte. So therefore these are just simply padding to fill out for padding. I mean that's that's really all there is to it. And then all these reds are all your data correction crap. Now also to note uh, in this case this um, Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. This is a 16 by 16. It has four extra little bits here. Those are just completely unused. And this is, uh, to note here, this is a different case because it's a different size for the corner byte, as it's called. This is a sideways L, and it has its remaining three bits here stashed to the side. That would be case number uh, 2. So there you are. So that's how you know, you know, where the bits are for that special case. And Wikipedia shows uh, they have a barcode. That's that same barcode here. They show how to, how it's spelling Wikipedia for you, and where all the error correction is, and where the wraparound pieces are here as well. You can see the D here is wrapped with the D over here. The I up here is wrapped with the I down here. 
and the I down here is wrapped with the I up there. The W here is the W over there. So Wikipedia, a great reference for this if you want to learn more. I plan on doing some more example videos with different sizes. I'll probably do 10 and 12. So when and if I do those, uh, those will be linked in the comments. So I hope this is a good reference to learn uh, Data Matrix. And I hope you uh, either take this up as a fun puzzle for decoding Data Matrixes, as I wanted to do with it, or you create the next awesome Data Matrix reading program. So best of luck to you on either way. Have fun with that.